Uh, right, good afternoon, everybody, and a very warm welcome to our weekly lunchtime webinar. As you know, we uh, you know take this opportunity once a week just to share our skills and our knowledge and to encourage people. And it's kind of like our, our weekly meeting in the Facebook group, I guess. We sort of just uh, you know take time out. We all need a bit of a lunch break, so hopefully you've got a cup of coffee and, and something to drink. Uh, please do uh, just pop a chat uh, message in and say how's it and tell us particularly which university you're from. So as you know, we sort of you know update everyone through the universities and hopefully they'll you know send those emails out to you guys. I'm just very keen to see who comes through uh, in terms of which universities uh, are represented. So I can just give them some feedback that uh, you know their students are coming and getting value from these sessions. So please do just let us know which university you're from. And then, of course, uh, you know, once you've done that and said, how's it, and given Cara and myself just a little love and encouragement for today, uh, very warm welcome to Cara. Please also let us know particularly about mentorship. So I'm going to ask Cara to introduce herself just now and explain the great work that she's been doing with regards to mentorship. We're very keen to solve, you know, the problems relating to uh, mentorship and coaching and the support and accountability that will help you be successful and get through and your study. So we firmly believe in the model of mentorship, and we've got that program going now uh, in the Facebook group. So uh, good vibes coming through from University of Pretoria. Mm -hmm. Cara is from uh, University of Pretoria. So Cara, yep. over to you. <laughs> introduce yourself, tell us all about yourself, and then this wonderful, incredible work that you've been doing around mentoring other students. Oh, well, hi, guys. Um, I'm actually currently an MSc student at the University of Pretoria. I'm doing pharmacology. Um, been at Tux since 2017, actually. I uh, did biochemistry and then farms last year in my honours. Um, and then obviously found this awesome platform and then started mentoring through there as well. But then also a part-time lecturer at Wingu Academy and... Yeah, started that recently as well. So that's just a very, very condensed type <laughs> background. No, and I mean, your full story is coming out on the podcast as well and just the incredible research you're doing around um, uh, breast cancer research uh, through your yep. pharmacology and your BSc degree. And then, you know, all the sort of ins and outs of that and, you know, possibly looking to spread your wings overseas in the future, but currently at the master's stage, and yep. just doing what you can to give back. And I mean, that is just so inspiring. So, Cara, really great to have you on the show. And uh, what we're going to aim to do is, you know, solve people's um, problems with regards to getting mentors. And then hopefully we've got some people that are willing, like yourself, to sign up and, and be a mentor. Because we want to empower people to help themselves where they are. And as you say, through the community, we've created that environment uh, that people can do that. So, Cara, I mean, just now you mentioned, and uh, the last time we chatted, you had one mentor, and then literally now you said you've got three. So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously without, you know, any names or details, but just give us a bit of a story and the highlights of, you know, each of these three students and how you're approaching that and what are some of the common challenges that you see coming through and that you think mentors need to be able to help people with. So um, I started with one mentee about, geez, like January. And then um, I think you mentioned me on your webinar. And then I had two additional mentees. Um, so that's been really great. Had a few Zoom calls with them and just helping them get through. I mean, the one girl, she was um, going through summer school. So then I had to kind of um, help her tackle that. And um, the next person I think they were struggling more so with a career change they wanted they did a whole degree three-year degree there in their third year and they wanted to um, go into pharmacology so I had to give that perspective then I mean another person would be um, more so just trying to organize their academics or you know a better way of studying so but the thing is they all had common themes I mean they all struggled with time management they didn't have a routine they didn't have I don't know, to-do list, Kanban board set in place. So it was very similar problems across different fields. One was engineering, one was psychology. Um, I mean, even I've been mentoring two other um, family friends of mine. One I went to high school with, actually. Um, she wants to go into beauty. So that's complete. I mean, I'm a scientist, and she wants to go and do makeup and stuff. Like, no. <laughs> um, so... 
Um, I had to help her with her time management and getting stuff done. She procrastinates. And then um, another student um, that wants to do medicine, he's in matric now. So it's a range of people, but it's essentially the same sort of problems that come so up. Let's go, yeah, Cara, let's go through them and, and let's give people some value today. And I mean, let's coach and mentor, you know, people that have hopped on to listen to us this afternoon. Um, so I think the first one that you mentioned there was time management, right? So, yep. um, you know, just specifically, what are the issues with regards to time management? And then you mentioned a to-do list and a Kanban board, I mean, et cetera. Actually, just before I came online, I checked in the group and somebody posted a picture of their Kanban board, uh, <laughs> which is obviously you know, off the back of the uh, course that we launched earlier this year called the uh, Student Success Masterclass, Six Steps to Complete Your Degree with Confidence. So we're going to be, um, you know, releasing 10 free seats into the session today for everybody to go and do that. And in the course, I teach about a Kanban board, but that's just one solution that people could use. What are you seeing in terms of the problems that people have specifically around time management and what is working for your mentees? So um, I, think, I think people don't realize that with time management, you have to be very, very strict with yourself and be realistic at the same time. I mean... It's great that you want to do like 10 hours of work a day, but I mean, <laughs> not many people can do that or do it consistently for weeks on end. Um, so, for example, my mentee with the summer school, um, I essentially told her to put together a routine for herself, literally put in all the details, account for when you are going to have dinner, when you're going to take a break. You need to have everything set out, especially if you're at varsity, you need that routine. It just helps with memory as well and concentration, I think, because you know that this is when I need to concentrate and then you have your break to look forward to and whatnot. So anyway, with hers, um, she sent me her schedule and then I revised it and then we kind of made a few tweaks based on my experience. I mean, I probably can't, I, I honestly can't work for maybe more than six hours, study more than six hours. I just, I can't. So Anyway, basically just based on that, also sleeping schedules, your routine, getting those eight hours and which I'm, everyone struggles with. <laughs> um, but just those kind of things, you need to be very strict with yourself. And yeah. the nice thing for undergrads is that they have, you know, they have quarters or, you know, then they have like three months and then they have a break so they can kind of, you know, not continuously work, they can have a bit of a break and then they can come back to their studies. So um, it's not going to be forever. You just have to kind of persevere through it. Okay, good. So, I mean, I, I mean, I heard you talk a lot about the just tasks and I mean, I've just sh shared the, the, the Kanban board and the principles that, you know, are in the course, um, the Student Success Masterclass. And uh, somebody, as I mentioned, shared their own uh, Kanban board in the Facebook group. And really, I think, Cara, what you were talking about there is just, you know, being able to visualize what is on your plate, what it is that you should be focused on at the moment and you need to allocate some time to. And if you need to put tasks on there like, you know, read a book, rest, relax, sleep, whatever, that just gives you a total view of everything that's happening in your life at the moment. Otherwise, you're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to start getting anxious. You're not going to be able to sleep well because you just think that you've got too much to do. Then what the time that you have available and what i hear you saying is that natural fact we do all have enough time to do what we have to it's just about getting a little bit more organized potentially and a kanban board is is, is one way of doing that i tried using a kanban board to be very honest with you because after listening or not listening but completing your course i really thought it was interesting and really a different concept and then i think i did it for a week and then i just said i can't i feel like it's i've got so many things to do it's your personal life it's your professional life it's studying it's just too much so i couldn't organize it so then i kind of adjusted it a little bit and then kind of went back to a few things that worked for me i mean i have a calendar type page and then i write everything in there and then that just helps me organize my thoughts and take day by day um i i honestly can't you have to take week by week, day by day. You can't, you're going to overwhelm yourself, like you said. And it's mm. anxiety. No, we have enough of that as students. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought I'd quickly share, um, you know, the Kanban board that uh, someone put in the chat. And as you say, Kara, it's oh, not wow. going to work for 
everybody and you have to adjust it um, to work for you and you know make sure that oh. you, 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 you use it to the degree that it's going to be beneficial for yourself. But I just love the time and care that was put into this um, <laughs> by one of the ladies in our uh, Facebook groups. I think it's just absolutely fantastic. But I think as Cara said, you know, try it. If it doesn't work for you, try something else. Um, I, I must admit, I don't, I'm not religious about a Kanban board. So if you look at what I'm seeing in my workspace, I don't have exactly that, but I have the mentality where I compartmentalize tasks. And in my notebook, I know what is kind of in progress. So that would be the middle column there. And then I know what's kind of on my backlog, all the things that I need to do. And it's just that to-do list management. It's just a clear understanding of what it is that you need to spend your time on and then working through those tasks. And Cara, I mean, you know, we had a great chat towards the end of last year. And, and I mean, you mentioned another word, procrastination just now. And it reminds <laughs> me of that, uh, the one session where you were getting through your last exams. And I guess we were all tired at the end of last year. And, um, and yeah, you're telling me. Very, yeah, you were very honest. And you just said, look, I'm struggling. We had Jeff, <sighs> Jeff on, you know, the double PhD. And I said, everybody put in the chat, you know, what are you struggling with? And you said, procrastination. I'm just not getting to my exams. Or you had to study. So, I had so to study. Talk to, about, talk to me about procrastination and how do we solve that? And how did you get through procrastination? Because I guess, Kara, you can have a wonderful Kanban board and you can have your task listed there, but then you can still procrastinate by not actually doing the task, right? I mean, does anyone ever actually get over procrastination? I feel like I still struggle with it. I feel like I still struggle with time management and getting things together. I mean, honestly, I, I mean, I am in my fifth year of studying and I still have days where I just, I can't. And I think... The nice thing about the platform is that it kind of makes you realize that everyone's human because, I mean, you hear people with their two PhDs and they're studying this and whatnot. And I don't know, it's very um, discouraging almost because you feel like you're not doing enough. But, I mean, everyone has their bad days and no one's perfect. Like I said, I still struggle with those concepts that I tell my mentees or I advise them. I mean, I remember I was doing a Zoom meeting and uh, one of my mentees, I was helping her with, uh, I think it was procrastination or motivation or something, um, giving her a pep talk. And I myself was struggling to stay motivated to do my protocol so or proposal. We call it a protocol. Um, and I was sitting there and I told her honestly, I said, I, I'm trying my best to motivate you, but I'm personally not motivated right now. <laughs> so it's a little difficult for me. But um, she ended up motivating me as well. So it was kind of a win-win situation type thing. <laughs> and that's so true. And I'm, and I'm very authentic. And, you know, I tell people that I also have my bad days. And I also I'm, can be the worst procrastinator. Um, you know, if I'm in the middle of a Netflix series and I, you know, it's sort of <laughs> hard, you know, it's sort of. So, so I think, you know, one of the techniques. Oh, that that's was, true. Was burning your boats. I mean, so you make this public commitment to get something done. And then that kind of just gives you that it closes the door on on you know backing out and procrastinating and it's almost being a bit hard on yourself and i think this is where mentorship does potentially play a role now because with your mentees i mean are you using the approach whereby and and, and let's say you're both demotivated right but you know the technique of burning your boats i mean do you then say to your mentee okay commit to me something that you'll get done by monday lunchtime and then I'm going to ask you on Monday lunchtime, have you done this task? And at least that knowledge that there's an expectation might overcome that demotivation or that Netflix series or the other thing that they want to do on the side. So um, that's exactly actually what I did. So with the routines that I put in place and um, the thing is, is that with the student from summer school, what we did or when she was doing her summer school in the beginning of the year, she we had um, Zoom meetings every week. So every Friday, Friday, every Friday afternoon, we would kind of just go back and see what she did during the week. And I had her schedule. So I literally said to her, you should have studied this, this, this. Did you get everything done? So she was being held accountable. And that's the really cool thing about a mentor. I mean, if I had a mentor back in the day, I would probably, it's like almost having a supervisor. You're, mm. you're being held accountable to some extent. So mm. I think it also does push you and put a bit of pressure on you. Um, 
I mean, my, my super, no, not my supervisor, the same mentee, um, I actually told her that I needed to get this done. And she said, okay, the next time we have a Zoom call, I'm going to check up on you then. So I didn't even ask her. She said she's just going to check up on me. So, I mean, being held accountable, it has some power in it, I think. Fantastic. So, so Tabor was asked a question there. Um, procrastination is still a problem. I'd love more tips to handle that. So, Tabor, we're going to help you right now. And we're going to use the burn the boats principle. So, Tabor, I want you to think about something that you just, you're not getting around to completing a task, maybe some words in a project that you're busy with, or a paper that you need to read, or a module that you need to study for. But don't, don't think of something too big. I want a task that you can do in the next couple of days. Uh, that's going to take you a few hours. And what I'd like to offer you the opportunity to do is to put this burn the boats principle in practice that uh, Cara was talking about and that she herself experienced and learned and has now applied with her mentees. And to Borko in the chat today on this live webinar, what I'd like you to do is to put that commitment there of what you're going to get done and by when you're going to get it done. And then in the Facebook group, if you want to hop in there and join the great community that Cara has been talking about, we'll be able to hold you accountable to that. But even just putting it on the chat today and verbalizing it into a public forum, uh, like our lunchtime webinar, you know, you don't have to give all the details of it, but just tell us I'm going to do 200 words by Sunday night, for example. And you in your mind know exactly what that means. And, and like Cara said, that's going to flip a switch in your brain that once you've made that commitment, it kind of somehow subconsciously becomes a little bit more important than the other things that, you know, are creeping in and competing for your time. So to Borko, we're going to leave you uh, with that as something to think about and a task and a commitment that you want to um, put onto the uh, onto the chat and uh, then we'll encourage you to do that. And it worked for Kara. Kara was struggling to study and we got her to put the same thing on the chat and uh, she said, I'm going to study, what is it, Kara, four hours today? And oh, uh, I, I don't remember. That was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, uh, mm -hmm. and we did and then she did her exams the next week and uh and she did well so 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 that really helped there quite a bit now cara let's talk about then hopefully matching up a couple of people today because as you said you picked up three mentees and we've got a mm -hmm. mentorship feature in the facebook group and i'll put the link to the, to the group there just now if anybody's not on the group you can hop in there and click the button and say i need a mentor or I want to become a mentor, and Cara has been through it, and she can help you with it. Maybe, Cara, just explain the process in the Facebook group and how it's quite simple for people to pair themselves up. But then what I'd like is to find a mentor today in the session now for Numpumalelo. And obviously, you guys will have to make connection in the Facebook group. But if somebody today is willing to give back and possibly put their hand up to become a mentor, um, you know, that'd be fantastic and we'll take you up on that and you and Nompo Malelo can explore whether you're suitable for each other because not, you know, you're not all going to be suitable for each other and it may not work out, but at least there's that encouragement uh, from the get-go. So, Kara, explain to us how the mentorship feature works in our Facebook uh, community. So, the mentorship is actually really cool because um, it's, it kind of gives you a bit of a prompt where it says the steps in your mentorship. And I wish I had my book here somewhere with me because I have it written down, but it's eight steps and it basically just um, encourages you to get to know each other. Um, you know, basic things, background, what are you studying? Where are you studying? What do you need help with? Um, and then seeing if you can add value and if you honestly feel like you can't, then rather end the men mentorship and then you will stop getting prompts and you'll stop getting messages. Um, but then if you... I don't know, like each other, <laughs> but then you get on and you think you can really help and add value to that person's studies. Um, then you just keep getting messages and the mentorship can go on for as long as you want. I mean, I've been talking to the one student since I think December, January, another one more recently and same with the other one. Um, so we, I mean, you can, you can also, um, what's the word? You can find your own way that works for you. I mean, I asked my mentees personally, do you want to have a video call? Do you want to text? What do you want? What will help you? And then um, they all agreed that video calling is the best. Um, so weekly Zoom meetings or Google Meets if you want. Um, 
just, I mean, even using some of, you know, your, you know, um, courses and the content that, you know, the burn your boats and the power of 10 minutes and just, you know, kind of drawing from that as well, which is what I did as well. Um, and also your own experience and also prepping for your um, sessions with your mentees. I prepped, I sat down and thought what I did in my undergrad in the same situation and try to help them. And I mean, also what's quite important to remember is that not everyone is going to be from your field. I mean, I, I, my first student was an engineering student and we are completely different. And I honestly didn't think I could help, but thankfully there's so many problems that overlap between fields and degrees that it was kind of, I don't know, easy to help her out because we had similar struggles. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really rewarding. You meet some really great people, I must say. Fantastic. And I just, your point there about uh, mentorship applying across faculties is fantastic because <clears throat> none of my courses deal with anything specific to a certain faculty. And I myself did engineering. Yeah. But what I try to emphasize in the courses is the common principles and practices that I think will work across multiple faculties. And then it's up to you to apply the specifics, you know, within your faculty, like, for example, referencing. It's going to have a certain style if you're doing writing. Or you might call a proposal a protocol. Or you might have a couple mm -hmm. of steps here or there. But broadly speaking, there is a lot of common things that we all do as academics and as students that if we can help each other through a mentorship program, um, we can just be more successful, even if it is from an engineer to a doctor or from a humanities student to um, uh, accounting, for example. And I think just so encouraging that you can reach across those faculties and just diversify and broaden your own mind, um, you know, with increased understanding of what's going on in those other areas and then learn from doing that as well. So, Cara, um, great that you've explained that uh, mentorship program there and good that you've got that sort of weekly Zoom catch-up process going. And one of the things that we teach in the Student Success Masterclass, and you mentioned, you know, having a supervisor, but whether it's a supervisor or a mentor, there's maybe some sort of weekly update and you can do this verbally you can send it by email you can send it by text message but the trick is really to get into a regular habit of doing it and as i've explained many times in this forum um, i use that in my phd i sent 360 weekly supervisor status reports and it was a very short email these are the things i did last week these are the things i commit to doing next week and then i had a section for general topics and then obviously i would attach anything relevant for that week what it did was it consolidated all my communication with my supervisor for the week so that my supervisors weren't getting lots of emails from me. They knew that they would get one status report from me, it would come through on a Monday and it would give an update of everything um, that I was busy with. Now, you could easily take a version of that thinking and apply that between a mentor and a mentee to just keep somebody accountable and going through the tasks that maybe they've got on their Kanban board or they've got a deadline of studies and, and a timetable that they need to keep up to date with, et cetera, which then I think tracks and manages, you know, through that interaction, the progress that you need to make um, on doing that. And I see, you know, people asking questions about, um, you know, demotivation and procrastination. <laughs> so talk, talk, you know, yes, we all get demotivated, but a mentor, you know, could be something that might be able to help you with that. Um, kiddo um, is a University of Pretoria student. They need a mentor. Um, a mentor is not going to solve all your problems for you. <laughs> the supervisor is not going to solve all your problems. Oh, no. The supervisor has got that academic oversight. Then a mentor or a coach is going to be your, your encouragement. And then you've got your family and your friends and your other support structure. Mm. At the end of the day, and this is what I teach in the course, well, you have to have the right mindset. It is your degree. You've taken the step of registering and enrolling and setting that as a goal for yourself. And obviously, the levels of freedom that you have do, you know, change as you go up through masters and PhD, et cetera. But first and foremost, it's your degree. Then get a mentor in to help you. And um, I'm just thrilled to see that McCorsey uh, has offered to be a mentor. So McCorsey. Well done. That's yeah. going to be awesome. Yeah, McCorsey. So, Carl, yeah. what do you have for McCorsey then? That's cool. I'm so glad. I, I think it's going to be really fun. <laughs> but you're going to have to put some time aside. Put some time, absolutely. But it's very rewarding. 
you learn a lot, you'll broaden your horizon, you'll meet some new people. What, so what should Mancosi do now, Cara? What is the first step? They go on the Facebook page, sign up to become a mentor, and then everybody else that's yep. on the call today that wants to be a mentee, they just hop in there and say, I need a mentor. Is that how it works? Yeah, it's, it's a really easy um, process, really, really easy. I mean, I remember you telling me that um, I must go and explore, and it's really not that difficult. <laughs> You just you just go to the um, the mentorship tab and then you'll find everything there. Wow, that's amazing, hey! Okay. Trust me, getting getting onto here was more difficult than that than actually <laughs> to be a mentor. So. <laughs> dealing with the dealing with technology, and I mean, this is one. Of, this is Streamyard is one of the easier uh, broadcast studios to use. Um, Let's just have a look, man. Gozo's got a question. There will subscribe to the channel be enough while wanting to get a mentor. Okay, so man, Gozo, maybe let's just explain a few things here. So the channel that you're on now is a YouTube channel, and I publish and share, you know, videos and content and lessons that's useful for everybody. But the intimacy and the relationship, you know, comes through the Facebook group, and that's really where we're able to, like the lady, you know, that this morning that I've showed just now, she put her kanban board on there. Uh, Cara mm -hmm. shares her mentorship services. Um, other people have shared their weekly wins. So we have, you know, every week a weekly win challenge. And we say, right, you know, just as a broad thing in a community, what are you guys are working on? And some people say, I've got to finish two papers by the end of the week, or I've got to get 300 words done for my proposal, etc. cetera. Um, and what Car is talking about in terms of that mentorship tab is in the Facebook group. So I'll just quickly put the link there to the Facebook group, hop into the Facebook group, and that's where you'll see the tab to say that you want to be a mentor or to get uh, a mentor to help you um, with that. Uh, so Mangozo says, yeah, waiting, I meant I'll, you'll be there half an hour. Don't worry. My task, my action, I will take action and I'll mm -hmm. make accountability to everybody is that I will get you guys into the Facebook group. Obviously, members only. So we do just approve it to make sure that we, we, we keep it you know, well moderated and respectful for everybody that is part of that because we do take this very seriously and it's a very important part of people's lives to get through their studies. I've been through that journey and this is my way of giving back. Um, so I moderate that group quite carefully and do approve everybody that comes in. Um, but by all means, subscribe onto the channel, Mangozo. Uh, go and look at the webinar where we coached Kara through a procrastination at the end of last year. Go and look at the interview that we did with uh, Bubu Bana, for example, uh, where he offers a jobs platform if you guys are struggling with cash and you need some work experience. Um, there's actually a platform there. We interviewed Bubu. We interviewed Daniel Robas a couple of weeks ago. Brilliant, brilliant entrepreneurial uh, mentor um, and a successful student as well. So the YouTube channel gives you access to all of that content, but the Facebook group gives you the relationship with the mentors um, and the mentees, you know, as we've been sort of talking about just now. So Numpo Malelo, the name of the Facebook a group is called the Student Success Coach. Uh, you can go find it on Facebook, uh, absolutely, but I will pop the link um, in there as well now as well. Cara, I just want you then also to say congratulations to Sine Leziwe, um, who is is um, willing to be a mentor. So just some words of encouragement and advice for this additional mentor that we've got on the group. Oh, well, that's awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm really glad that there's two people now that want to, you know, help other people. I mean, um, you're going to gain a lot more than you think you're going to gain. Trust me. Um, I mean, I didn't think going into it, I would have learned much. But I mean, something as small as communication skills improve, you know, and it means it, it definitely makes a difference. So it's going to be fun. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. So, so I mean, I, I guess importantly, Cara, I'm not keeping a list, you know, of everybody that's volunteered or needs a mentor today, but the two that have put their hands up, we're relying on them now to, you know, make good on this commitment, hop into the Facebook group and uh, click on that tab and become a mentor. And then everybody that's wanting to be uh, mentored uh, that we've got on the chat today. Uh, so, for example, Rory Sung, uh, from Bits University, welcome, great to have Bits uh, in the session today. You need a mentor, so the action that you need to take to solve that problem for yourself is to hop into the Facebook group. Now, Cara, how does it work if there's multiple mentors? Do you get to choose which mentor you want? Um, how does that work? Um, well, I mean, I've only I've been the only mentor for a while, so I don't mm. know if it's a deal. Okay, we're going to learn. We're going to learn about that. Yeah, okay. no, 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 but um, you have to put a bit of information about yourself. 
um, I think I mentioned on my students and um, what I'd like to help people with. Um, I mean, I think I think if especially with um, people that want to go into the science field, I feel like it's very um, how can I say not well known. There's a lot of ignorance around the field, so I think that's kind of where I would love to help people the most. Um, but anyway, I'm going. I'm straying now. Um, my point is, I think you can actually choose who you want if there's multiple mentors. Like, for example, if you want someone to actually help you through your engineering degree with specific, um, you know, modules or whatnot, then obviously you wouldn't go for me. I mean, what do I know about engineering? So um, I think I think you can choose. Like okay. you said. So, so, <laughs> yeah, so, so what you're saying is then that when you sign up to become a mentor, and I mean, guys, by all means, if it doesn't work for you, then you just cancel that. And I mean, this is not a great commitment. This is really just as Cara was saying, once you go into the relationship, you must just set the, the boundaries of that. And it could be just a half an hour chat once a week, for example. Um, I even myself offer half a minute, half a hour <laughs> uh, phone call. Half a minute, not going to get much better there. But half an hour, uh, free coaching, happy, very, very willing to, to hop on a call. And I've done that a few times. People have got a hold of me. And the best way to do that is through the, through the Facebook group. But really, Cara, what you're saying is pop into the Facebook group, you know, click that mentor button, put some information in about yourself, and then maybe just indicate which faculty you're from so that if you do have a preference for staying within your faculty when you have a mentor, and there's maybe some faculty-specific questions, like an engineer wants an engineering mentor, for example, then that could be part of your selection process uh, for, for, for getting a mentor, I suppose. Yep, I agree. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. And then, so Jabulani, Jabulani, you need to take action and uh, go into the Facebook group and then sign up. So we don't want to oversubscribe Kara. So, I mean, I wouldn't advise more than three, max four. I don't know. It's, you've spoken mm. to your studies as well. So I think Kara is pretty much full up at the moment. But we've certainly got uh, Rory Sung and at least one other, uh, Mankosi, uh, to be a mentor. So you guys need to go look for these. So let's say this afternoon, guys, after we get off this call, we're all going to hop into the Facebook group and then sign up as mentors. And I'd like you guys just to share that with everybody else um, just so that people can see exactly um, what is happening there. Cara, maybe let's just then change gears a little bit into, you know, carrying on the coaching, um, you know, the, and, the, and the advice and the value that people expect when they come into these sessions on a Friday afternoon. You know, tips, tips for dealing with the motivation. I mean, you've been very open and authentic that you deal with it. I also deal with the motivation. I, I don't sleep enough, probably. Um, <laughs> you know, I, 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 know. I, I why not? I, I just why I not? Don't. I should. I, I just I like to get done. I like getting stuff done, but I should prioritize sleep better. So that's something that I need someone to coach and help me. But I, I commit to everybody on this course on this session today. <laughs> you can see I'm mixing my words because I didn't have enough sleep last night. I was recording as I was telling Cara just before we popped online. I'm busy finalizing a new course on communication. So it's going to be communication typically for early stage professionals, going to be very useful for students, etc. Looking for those skills as you get into the working world around, you know, how to do emails, how to manage your social media accounts, you know, how to manage and improve your verbal communication, how to, you know, convey yourself in online meetings, prepare good slides, present well, and all, you know, the related aspects around communication that you need to have. Uh, you know, ready for yourself before you go into the workplace. I was literally here in my studio up until about one o'clock last night. So I commit to everybody on this course and, and this session, you can hold me accountable. I will be in bed by eight o'clock tonight. Um, <laughs> your, your thoughts on dealing with demotivation? Why? How much sleep on average do you get? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think on average, I mean, I will take one or two nights in the week. Um, and in actual fact, there's a video on the YouTube channel about the importance of getting sleep. And I'll explain now why. You more the medical students, you'll know oh, my word. It. But on average, I would say six, six and a half, maybe, on average throughout the week. Uh, maybe seven, I would say, on average. Is that not enough? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't function on less than eight hours. Like literally, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so grumpy. It's so bad. I mean, I can't concentrate or anything. I mean, my throughout my entire degree, both of them, um, yeah. undergrad and honors, 
um, I consistently got my eight hours. And I live in Joburg and I had to travel to Pretoria. So it was like a 40 minute drive too. So I don't know how I coped with that. So I still, you know, I just had to get my sleep. And I mean, literally with every single mentee, I, I always ask them, how many hours are you getting? And I think they think I'm a little bit nuts because <laughs> I make a big deal out of it. Um, but the thing is from like a biological point of view, because I mean, mm. I think, um, I mean, your, your body needs to rest and life is so busy as it is. And I mean, once you get into that routine of bad sleep, you're never going to catch up your sleep. There's no such thing as that. So, um, I mean, it's all about habit forming, you know, yeah. 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 you need you to get more sleep. <laughs> Kara, thank you, and I appreciate the coaching that you've given to me today. And as I understand it, when you <laughs> sleep, the brain actually sort of irrigates itself and sort of almost resets. You know, and if you never, if you don't have enough sleep, then your brain is continually functioning on a very clogged, sort of bogged down sort of type of, and you feel foggy, and that's why you need coffee and caffeine, and then you get into that very negative. Yeah. Oh no. Those well. people that pull all nighters. Oh no. Uh -uh. Look, I've done a few. I've, I've done a few. I don't know how they life. do it. They're not pleasant. They're not pleasant. Um, and I, I don't don't regret them because you know I was chasing deadlines and you know had, mm. had stuff that I need to get done, etc. So the comment there that we had before around just dealing with the motivation, maybe. Yeah, sorry, oh, I deviated a bit. No, talk floor. Maybe get some. Maybe commit to getting eight hours and then wake up tomorrow morning bright and fresh. Put your Kanban board up there. List your tasks out. Go through the course. I'm going to put the course now in the chat. And maybe that's one task that you can commit to doing is going through the course. It's going to be completely free for you guys. There are a few uh, free seats available, so you'll have to enroll to grab that. And Kokolo, hopefully in that course, it will give you some of that motivation. And what I've aimed to do with the Student Success Masterclass is a bit of a roadmap. So a little bit of a, a journey plan that will take you, you know, from start to finish in terms of uh, being successful um, in your studies. And you can see there, um, you know, the six steps to student success. Uh, so, you know, often you get demotivated because you don't know what you need to do and you, you don't know where to start. And hopefully what the six steps gives you is a little bit of a step-by-step -step process uh, to being successful. So I will pop that onto the um, onto the chat now and you can hop in there, Kroko, and maybe that will help you uh, with some tips for, for motivation. Clara, last thoughts on, on demotivation and dealing with that? I mean, the thing is, is that, I mean, if I can say it really frank, like it really, it's a sucky thing to mentor someone about because I mean, everyone is different in how they stay motivated and you have to see what works for you. I mean, I, it's, some people will say, no, I focus on my goal and my goal is to do my PhD, right? So that's still a while away. Um, but I mean, I, I have that in the back of my mind. So I have like this little, um, I'm sure people will know it. It's like a, a light up type thing and you put letters in and it makes words and whatnot. Mm. So it's a decoration thing in my, um, my box. study. Yes. So then um, I have the words Dr. Demora. So my name, my surname, obviously, um, just to like, that's my goal. That's my end type thing. And then even last year when I was writing exams, I print, I was struggling. Hey, yes. Yeah. I was struggling so badly with motivation. I can't even tell you. It was probably the worst I've struggled because of this whole COVID thing and everything um, that I actually printed my undergrad um, degree um, awards, just everything that I've excelled in academically. And I put it right up where I was studying so that whenever I felt like I was just dipping, I kind of looked at it and then, I mean, undergrad was tough. Undergrad was very, very tough. So um, I think just remembering what I went through and even the mental health struggles and the anxiety related to that, everything just kind of, just remembering what you've been through and the fact that you've got through it kind of gets you through whatever you're struggling with now. So that was my form of motivation. It might be something else for someone else. So you kind mm. of have to find, that, to find what works. <laughs> what works for yourself. I love that. Have you got your light box there with you? Can you show us? Um, um, I actually have. I changed it. I changed it recently. Can you guys see it? I changed it to. 
I was struggling Hashtag. with my. <laughs> but... Oh, wait, I didn't even put the light on. Where is the light? I don't even use the light because batteries are expensive. <laughs> so, oh no, but yeah, it's just something, something small that I do. No, <laughs> oh, well done. And I mean, I've, I've, I'm, I just popped a link in the chat to the podcast because, you know, and I explore these things with people in the interviews that are released every Wednesday. And there was a student um, on one of the recent interviews, or it's coming up, I'm not sure, but she actually has left a blank space on her wall. So in her oh, pictures yes. and she's <laughs> up on her wall, she's left a blank space. And she says, that blank space is for my PhD certificate. And when she sits there and she sees that blank space, it motivates her because she knows she's going to fill that blank space with her PhD certificate. So you've got your light box, um, <laughs> your Lundy student, you know, in that interview is coming up in season one. She's got a blank space above there. So plot door, hopefully those are just a couple of techniques that you can use to, to beat and overcome your, um, your issues of demotivation. <clears throat> so I put the link to the podcast um, in the chat. And hopefully that's um, that's available for you there. So just a reminder to Sine Lizwe and Mancosi, you guys just need to hop into the group and then sign up as mentors. And then everybody that um, has been asking for a mentor, you guys need to go and just look out for for them um, and, uh, and and subscribe to the channel, first of all, and then to uh, join the Facebook members only group and then to click on the mentor and see you know, what the steps are that you need to take uh, to go through. I've also put the um, 10 free seats available on the Student Success Masterclass. Uh, that link is also in the chat, so you can go and click that. You don't need to write that link down. That's actually also in the chat. I've also put the link to uh, the weekly stories of student success. And if anybody wants to be on the podcast, by the way, also please just pop me a pop me a, a Facebook message and we'll get you on. I've had Cara on the podcast. Um, we've got next week Ubuntu Fanteso, and he's a University of Johannesburg um, student and he's off to Oxford this year. So on the Rhodes Scholarship, um, I think 20 are awarded every year. And uh, he's just got a wonderful story uh, studying water scarcity in the Eastern Cape. And, uh, you know, so I'm going to just hold him accountable to coming back from Oxford. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to lose him off to the UK or anywhere else. Fantastic that he gets that education. But but we need him to come back here and solve our water scarcity challenges. And I'm very supportive of all of you guys spreading your wings and going and, and, and doing studies elsewhere and, you know, maybe finding your destiny wherever your heart leads you. Um, but I'm also proudly South African, and, um, and that's why I've set up this platform, uh, because I want to help people be successful and get their studies done. And I firmly believe that it's, um, you know, through rigorous academic research and studying that we're going to be able to solve the, the, the big problems of the world. Um, so look out for those inspirational stories in the podcast, and then obviously go into uh, Fantesso next week. And Schlingi, we're just picking up on that rest uh, and getting enough sleep uh mentions their biggest piece of advice to undergrads please get rest you will actually retain more info and ace your exams and a big yep. proponent of um hr sleeper night is jeff bezos so um you know he talks about building amazon and getting hr sleeper night so you think that's incredible you know if he can build amazon on hr sleeper nights you know we can get through our degrees and we can manage mm -hmm. everything else that we i think it's about being efficient when you're awake, you know, not relying yeah. on getting less sleep. So use the time that you're awake to be efficient. Hey, Cara, what do you what do you think? The thing is, I think some people, what they did is, um, I mean, I obviously met quite a lot of people in my undergrad, and they, um, some of them that did pull all night. I remember that they didn't really work throughout the semester. So if you work consistently and diligently, then and manage your time, then I mean, you don't really need to you know, last minute have to do all this work because you've done it already. I mean, I wrote notes, truly wrote notes throughout my entire degree as well. And I had the time for that because I work consistently and diligently. So I think that also contributes to it. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's just my opinion about it. I don't, I, people that say they don't get enough sleep, it's almost a bit of an excuse for me. <laughs> no offense. Guilty. No, guilty as God. <laughs> I need to use my waking time a lot better. 
Um, and it's definitely something I need to work on and improve. I can't rely maybe, on Maybe maybe we're just too busy, hey? Oh, well, then I must cut back because it is unsustainable. Yeah. Um, and at some yeah, you point, can't... you know, it's going to be unhealthy for me. So um, yeah. I want you guys you to hold me accountable. Yeah, you mustn't burn out either, hey? <laughs> I mean, it's just oh, about yeah. kind of being self-aware of how much you can actually take. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to go back to the gentleman that we asked to um, commit to doing something and to burn his boats. I don't see his uh, his comments, but uh, if you are still online and you did decide what task it is that you want to be uh, held accountable for solving, so it was Tobolko. So Tobolko, I just want to circle back because even if I didn't get enough sleep, I do have it. My memory is still decent. Uh, so I recall that we were just coaching you through procrastination there and giving you the opportunity to burn your boats um, here in the live webinar. And to Borka, if there is something that you want to commit to us all that you um, want to, to, to get done in the next couple of days, then please pop it in the chat and we'll hold you uh, accountable to that. Um, Malelo, what advice would you give to a person who has never been mentored but would like to be mentored? I would suggest maybe you hook up with Kara and uh, maybe Kara can just give you some tips about being a mentor. So Kara, you're going to be a mentor to the mentors. Uh, <laughs> because, um, but but also from my my thoughts would be you know question based coaching and mentoring is very important. It is the mentee's journey, um, so that's why I said get the mindset early right on. It's not you to take extra workload. It's you committing to whatever mechanism it is a month, a weekly half hour, or a weekly email, or some sort of mechanism that you will need to put a little bit of time into. But then in those sessions, it's about asking questions, about exploring with the person what, what success looks like for them. You know, we brand this community, the student success coach. And, and my role is to coach people, uh, you know, and scale that up through digital platforms um, around what their definition of student success is. And then to explore with them how they get there. And courses and coaching and content and mentors and community groups and ebooks and so on is all just supplemental information and skills and advice and experience but you know that person needs to be taking those steps on that journey to student success and as a mentor the best thing that you can do them do for them is to help them take those steps and sometimes it can be frustrating because they're not going to be able to take those steps and you're going to think that you failed as a mentor but never cross that line of doing it for them because then you create um, learned helplessness it's called learned helplessness and then, then all of a sudden now their degree is resting on your shoulders. So it's a fine dance, if you like, between the two. And you, that's why you need a little bit of relationship building at the front so that you set those expectations. You agree what that mechanism is going to look like. And then you're agitating. You're just nudging and pushing like I do every week. And like I do in the Facebook group, you know, we've got weekly wins. You know, I ask people, what are your goals? Like I did with Cara, what do you commit to doing this afternoon? Like we did with Taboka, what task are you going to commit to everybody doing this afternoon? A lot of those are questions. I'm just asking questions. What do you want to achieve? What do you want to commit to? What do you think you could do better? I'm very authentic and open and honest about my own failings and my own weaknesses. And I never say, look at me, I've got it all right. There's some things I've done well. There's some things I haven't done well. It's your journey to learn from not only me or Cara, but everyone else around you. And I think the topic of this webinar has been to say, if you go into an intentional mentorship arrangement that works for both sides can be a critical success factor um, in your studies. No, no, I agree. I agree as well. I mean, the thing is, going back to um, this comment, I mean, or question, I mean, I never, I was never mentored. I didn't have a platform like this when I was in my undergrad. Um, I did have my supervisor, though, and he's my supervisor this year as well. Um, and he's really, really incredible. I mean, he's he's always available if I need any help, not even just academic based, you know. And I mean, it's it's one thing, for example, asking or being held accountable by your family or friends, um, and you know, compared to someone in the field or not even in the field, but in the you know studying mindsets, the undergrad mindset, they've been there, done that. So. I mean, it was different. I mean, my one mentee did say that being held accountable by their by her parents was different than me because I kind of knew the um, level, the extent, or the 
I knew what was expected of her and, you know, that was, that kind of challenged her a little bit as well. Um, but like you mentioned earlier, getting a mentor is not going to fix everything for you. I mean, if you think that it's, I mean, you have to put in a lot of work from, from your side as well. And it doesn't mean that you're going to get it right, right away, or you're going to, um, not everything's going to work for you either. You kind of have to do a lot of trial and error, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, guys, as we finish off, and uh, I want to thank you all for joining us in our sort of weekly team meeting um, in the Student Success Coach community. Um, I just asked you there to, you know, just pop in the chat what topics, you know, we can schedule on in the next few weeks. Uh, we've got a couple of interviews lined up, but I'd really like to know what you're all dealing with. Is it writing? Maybe there's referencing issues. Um, is it about structuring a proposal or a thesis or planning out the last six months? We had a great conversation in the week uh, in the Facebook group, and I shared my actual six-month plan for completing my thesis, which I put up um, on the um, on my cupboard, and I ticked off day by day as I went through all the sections um, that uh, you know that I needed to complete, and uh, and that really helped me. And I shared that plan and that approach uh, with everybody. So if, if that's something that you want to uh, you know, me to teach you in the next few sessions, then please do let me know about that. Um, I see a couple of people, I think someone's in my son's class, or it's, it's even my son possibly on the on the webinar. So how's it, guys? It looks like you guys are finished school for the day. And that's just the power of digital platforms that you guys can get uh, the access here. So I think Daniel Holloway is probably one of my son's friends, I'm guessing. So hello, Daniel. And... Um, uh, I don't know if that's my son or one of his friends. But anyway, it looks like we're having a lot of fun there today, which is great. And it's Friday <laughs> afternoon. It's the weekend, and we are meant to have more fun. Hopefully, the weather's going to be good. Um, but, guys, mm. hop into the Facebook group. Uh, so I think we're going to finish off by saying, you know, in answer to Milani's question here, where do you start with a mentorship? You start in the Facebook group. You come into the Facebook group. There's a little tab up there. There's also events. There's announcements. There's everything that happens in our community. But for mentorship, go in there. And we've got a couple new mentors today that have signed up. And um, we're going to rely on them to take action and to set themselves up as a mentor. And then hopefully when you come in and say, I need a mentor, you can see Cara. You can see a couple of the others. And then there's a very simple process to go through, as Cara has explained. Um, it uh, is really dead easy to get to set up a relationship and then use what you've learned in the session. You know, use the tips and tricks that you've heard now this afternoon to structure that relationship and get um, the, the best out of it. Claude Claw is asking for taking care of mental health to ensure a successful academic year. Claude Claw, we did have Meredith Wiseman on a few weeks ago. So just go and check on the YouTube channel. I interviewed Meredith Wiseman and we touched on um, mental health. She's a clinical psychologist in Australia that does success coaching with students and we definitely touched on a couple of mental health issues there but I think that is absolutely important so I'll prioritize that to you know either get people in uh, or pick up on a couple of topics that I feel capable of teaching myself and I think it's a journey that we've all struggled with and it's been amplified and magnified because of COVID and the lockdown um, of last year when we were all very isolated and closeted and that that doesn't that's not conducive to solving mental health issues we need to be out in the fresh air we need to be socializing we need to be building relationships um you know digital hibernation is not conducive to to the surviving mental health issues so that's a big topic that i think we do need to talk about um please touch on tips for final years with regards to networking get opportunities after graduation thank you for your help so, Nompo Melelo, yes, um, I will quickly just pop a course there onto the um, group and uh, you'll be able to uh, pick up a whole uh, set of content and lessons that I teach in terms of how to boost your job prospects and then accelerate your career growth. So, the first half of the course really talks to um, positioning yourself in a while you're at varsity and getting ready for, um, you know, the workplace and possibly picking up a bit of a work you know, opportunity as you go through your studies, but then making sure that um, you are in the best possible position. You've built up your LinkedIn profile. Uh, you've built up your um, your uh, CV. I teach a tool in the course called um, Nova Resume. So um, I'll just put the link into the course there for you. 
and uh, Nova oh, so Nova resume is amazing. Oh, I, amazing. I inspire CV on there. <laughs> Uh, I, so I heard about it from you, so. And and how do you find it? Oh, it's awesome! Oh my 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 CV looks so impressive, so professional. I really love it. Yeah. Okay, okay, fantastic. So Numpumalelo, answering your specific question there, the tips for final years with regards to networking, getting opportunities after graduation. There is a lesson um, in that course um, on uh, networking. And um, you know, building a network and making sure that you are in the best possible position um, to uh, you know get the support that you need um, and the best possible job opportunities. Oh no! What happened here? advantage of the courses and uh, have a fantastic uh, afternoon and a weekend ahead. Um, I uh, look forward to seeing you in the courses and interacting with me as your instructor and giving you the value that you all need to be successful. Um, I do just want to also say a big thank you to uh, Cara for joining us today and being part of the session. Um, you know, you've really added a lot of value to our discussion this afternoon, Cara. And I think it's, it's just incredible that we've had Two or three people, I think, sign up to be mentors. And those two or three people are going to help, you know, five or six or seven other students. You know, so that compound effect of everybody helping each other be successful and just passing on the knowledge and making half an hour per week available for other people to be successful. You know, guys, if we can spread the word, if we can get more mentors to help other people, you know, we're going to turn the tide, you know, on the challenging economy that we've got in South Africa. You know, there's a high dropout rate in our universities. We're going to get more people through their degrees, more people into the jobs that they need, more people solving the problems uh, of the world that we have today. And I think it does all start with these type of communities where we're helping each other and supporting each other uh, to be successful. So, Cara, last thoughts as you say goodbye and, uh, and tell us that you've got a fantastic weekend ahead. <laughs> oh, I've got a very busy weekend ahead. <laughs> but, I mean, I hope, I hope everyone kind of... Um, you know, really seeks for some form of mentorship somewhere along the way. I mean, you can't do everything yourself. You have to ask for help somewhere, somehow. I mean, I I love doing things all by myself, but you have to you have to kind of wrap your head around the fact or accept the fact that well, you're not going to go far in life by yourself. <laughs> you, need, yeah. you need to guide you and you know support you through it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. You yeah, can't. Do it, you can't. You can't do it on your own. And we mm -hmm. have this sort of lockdowns compounds that sort of lonely journey of the student. And uh, you know, great just to get your feedback, Cara, about this community and the strength and support that it's given you. And hopefully, you know, more people can benefit from that and get the same, you know, advantage and encouragement. You know, that certainly it's very clear that we all absolutely need. Uh, in our studies as, 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 as we try and be successful in everything that we're trying to do. Renette, absolute pleasure. Um, great to have Cara on the show today. Simon Gele, uh, great that it's your first time today. Um, Scott, hey, how are you? Uh, good to hear from you. Hope you're well, bud. Uh, just touching on Nova Resume and LinkedIn. So the course that I've linked into uh, the chat has got all the Nova resume and LinkedIn info, and there's Scott. I think Scott, you've done the course. Um, so there's uh, um, Simon. I, it looks like my son's class is all on the webinar. Uh, <laughs> so great, to have, great to have my son's classmates all joining us today. Um, and uh, guys, any questions that we didn't get to? What I do is then I answer those questions on the YouTube channel in individual videos. So I'll take the questions from the chat and then I'll answer those specifically. But Please go and subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, subscribe to the podcast um, to get inspired by weekly stories of success, and then importantly, come and join the Facebook group uh, so that you get notified of these events, and of course, that you can go and get your uh, mentor, as we've been discussing this afternoon, so you can be more successful. 
Guys, we've had a fantastic session this afternoon. Thanks for all the feedback. Uh, it's our commitment to your success. Cara, thanks once again. Have a good weekend and all of this to everybody else that's been on the call today. Thanks, Cara. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys. It was great talking to you. Pleasure and good luck to everybody. Chat soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.